good day students thanks for your overwhelming support and as promised we shall be racing against time in today's class i shall be dealing with a short essay bronchiectasis whether the question is a short essay or a long essay or a short note it is always better to divide it into subheadings the subheadings will take us to the answer definition causes pathogenesis morphology complications investigations and diagram each one of them will be dealt with definition bronchiectasis is defined as a permanent irreversible dilatation of the bronchial tree distal to the second degree of division i repeat once again bronchiectasis is defined as a permanent irreversible dilatation of the bronchial tree distal to the second degree of division the first two divisions are adequately supported by cartilage look at this picture here you find the rims of cartilage are there in the trachea the first degree and the second degree of divisions therefore these sites are prevented from bronchiectasis coming to the causes the causes are divided into congenital and acquired whenever i use the word congenital acquired will always be there now what are the congenital causes cystic fibrosis it is an important condition clinically and also pathologically it is a question for us we shall see later cartagenous syndrome of prime importance can be asked as an ultra short question immortal celiac syndrome can be an mcq apart from these there can be congenital bronchiectasis which can be an embryological defect or a primary immunodeficiency in which the patient is repeatedly prone for infection leading to bronchiectasis these are all the congenital causes the acquired causes are one foreign body obstruction two obstruction due to a tumor foreign body obstruction is common in children and tumors in elderly people both of these act as ball valves in the sense they allow the flow of air into the bronchial tree but prevent it from going back as a result of which there is an accumulation leading to a pressure stasis and then distension another condition is a necrotizing pneumonia in which there will be an inflammation and a weakening of the walls so these are the three acquired causes of bronchiectasis cartagenous syndrome we had mentioned earlier for the sake of completion i am showing it here it has got a triad which consists of bronchiectasis situs inversus one of the most important defects in bronchiectasis and recurrent rhinosinusitis bronchiectasis situs inversus or dextrocardia and rhinosinusitis these constitute the cartagenous syndrome along with that there is an infertility there is an infertility basically the defect is with the cilia this is the structure of the cilia i got a normal cilium on the left side and a defective cilium on the right side when you observe the cilia you find that there are multiple pairs of arms called the dynein arms d y n e i n and they will be having extensions there can be three different extensions which are attached to these arms they help in the movement of the cilia a normal synchronous movement which removes all the dust particles 
and prevents infection. In a case of bronchiectasis, there is a defect in these arms, as a result of which there is stasis, no clearance, recurrent infections, leading to bronchiectasis. Applying the same theory, you find that the spermatocytes and the spermatogonia do not have motility because of the defect in such structures, as a result of which the patient may develop an infertility. Infertility is an inability to conceive. The pathogenesis. This is one of the most important parts of this answer. I would like you to concentrate. Whenever there is an obstruction, whatever be the cause, it can be a foreign body or it can be a tumor, there is stasis and the stasis leads to infection. Once there is an infection, there is an inflammation leading to partial destruction of the wall resulting in loss of elasticity. Obstruction and stasis, loss of elasticity. When the obstruction is persistent, there is further superadded infection. It is recurrent. And there is a distension of the bronchial tree. If there is a distension, why should it become persistent? That is because of a peribronchial fibrosis. A peribronchial fibrosis pulls the walls apart, leading to a permanent distension. That is what is shown in this schematic picture. Here, there is a neutrophilic infection or colonization, I'm sorry, bacterial infection and colonization leading to inflammation. Once there is an inflammation, there is a destruction of the airways. The neutrophils produce elastase. We had seen this earlier also in the class on emphysema. Once there is a destruction of the airways, there is abnormal mucus secretion, stasis is there which is not cleared, which again paves way for bacterial infection. So this happens recurrently. It is a vicious cycle. So this will be the pathogenesis of bronchiectasis. What then is the morphology? One is pathogenesis. We have seen the etiology earlier. What is the morphology? Look at this one. This is a bronchial tree that we have got. The bronchial tree, I find distensions in the lower lobes. Usually it is more prominent in the lower lobes because of the dependent drainage. So the bronchus is in main line with the trachea as a result of which all the infection spreads to the lower lobe. There is persistence leading to infection and dilatation. When I look at the gross specimen, I find that all these rounded structures that we are seeing are all dilatations of the bronchial tree. And the dilatations, I find that they are extending up to the subpleural surface. Subpleural surface. Normally, you find that beyond one centimeter, only we will be able to see the bronchial tree. Until then, we will not be able to. Whereas in a case of bronchiectasis, it can be a few millimeters, one to four millimeters from the pleural surface. And that is supposed to be diagnostic of bronchiectasis. So distension of the bronchial tree, that extends up to the subpleural surface. And we have seen this earlier, always it is in line with the main bronchi and it is more common on the right side because the right bronchus is in line with the trachea, more on the dependent areas. And in a case of a foreign body obstruction, it is limited to a single segment. It can be bilateral and widespread in a case of congenital disease such as the Carter-Jenner syndrome or mucoviscosis. Look at the morphology over here. This is a normal bronchial tree over here, slightly dilated, and it is cylindrical, C for cylindrical. In this one, you find that it is irregular and worm-like. We call it as varicose, varicose form of a bronchiectasis. In the last form, I find that they are distended and sac-like. We have seen 
saccular aneurysms also similar to that you have got a saccular bronchiectasis so it can be cylindrical varicose or saccular these are the different types of bronchiectasis added to which you can have fusiform and rat tail these are all the various morphological types of bronchiectasis sometimes you find that they can be up to four times the normal diameter so the distensions are 1 to 2 mm below the subpleural surface again the same morphology is given you people can draw this diagram microscopy just remember this words microscopy is not for students generally but then remember it there will be an infection inflammation leading to an ulceration and when it is persistent you find initially there is an acute inflammation short duration later on it becomes an acute on chronic inflammation it is persistent and it becomes an acute on chronic inflammation because of this there will be a fibrosis very bronchial fibrosis leading to distension ulceration inflammation in a case of tuberculosis you find that there will be granuloma granuloma is a hallmark of tuberculosis Cascading granuloma. A nice picture from Illustrated Pathology. It shows the various sequence of events that can happen in bronchiectasis. Look at this one. This lobe is affected. It is showing irregular dilatation of the bronchial tree. There is stasis. Obviously, the stasis will be leading to infection. And once there is an infection, when the patient coughs out, there will be copious amount of purulent sputum copious amount of purulent sputum will be there and that can also be the spread of infection once it invades the blood stream it can go to the brain for instance causing a meningitis or an encephalitis it can affect the opposite lung also and in some cases there will be a lung abscess this black color is an abscess This is a picture of a clubbing. You people know well about clubbing, but I am interested in pyogenic disorders of the lung, which will be empyema, lung abscess, and bronchiectasis. Three conditions. They are the pyogenic conditions which will result in clubbing of the digits. Other organs, particularly the kidney. will be showing amyloid deposition in the peritubular region in the interstitium so these are all the things let us recollect very fast stasis spread of infection copious sputum then there can be a meningitis or encephalitis lung abscess there can be an empyema thoracis over here clubbing of the digits can be seen and amyloid in distant organs complications the same thing is put up in a list that can be a lung abscess bronco pleural fistula so there is a fistula tract that forms between the pleura and the bronchus leading to a bronco pleural fistula collection of pus in the thoracic cage is called empyema empyema thoracis in the brain you can have a meningitis sometimes segments of the bronchi can collapse leading to atelectasis clubbing of the digits and amyloidosis so please remember this classifications it is a very important clinical question for you repeatedly asked question in general medicine it can be a case also for you what are the investigations that can be done the investigations are the sputum can be given for culture and sensitivity there can be an acid for stain that can be done for tubercle bacilli and regarding the treatment one of the best modes of treatment will be the postural drainage if the patient is having a bronchiectasis of the lower lobe you can increase the foot end of the bed and if he is having a bronchiectasis on the right side he can be asked to lie down on the left lateral position appropriate antibiotics are given then support with physiotherapy these are all important all said and done you have to treat the cause if the obstruction is due to a tumor the tumor has to be treated 
if it is due to tuberculosis the tuberculosis has to be treated i have said all that i have missed something let us see what it is this is a picture of the bronchus and i am having some contrast material that has been injected into it which is showing the outline of the bronchial tree irregular distension of the bronchial tree throughout this globe and this particular x ray is called a bronchogram it is due to an injection of a contrast material in fact what my medicine professor had said was the single most reliable, reliable investigations in bronchic cases can be a bronchogram manifestations we had seen the sputum can be copious copious means abundant and it will be a three layered sputum you have got a cellular sediment lower down and then there can be a liquid just above that and still above will be having a frothy or a foamy layer three layers are sediment of cells and then liquefied layer then a foamy layer these are the three layers three layered sputum is classical of bronchic cases f caris to that is tb